Since these days, more than anything, Joyce and Larry miss quality time together. They yearn to be out in the world, eating pizza on the sand at Gulfport and watching $5 movie matinees. But weekdays are exhausting. By the time they make it to the end of the workday, they often opt to sit and rest at home. Why? Because the shareholders got to get theirs. They don't care about the older people. which means that instead of actually enjoying their life, they don't really get a chance. That means their life is really essentially not theirs, not theirs to live. My mother is 72. She's trying to go back to work. Do you think that I want my mother to go back to work? Nope. She's a great grandma. She should be, you know, out living, spending time with her great grandson, chilling out with her grandkids, right? She should be going to brunch. I want my mother to go to brunch and have quiche, right? But she can't. Because the shareholders got to get theirs. Danger, boomers, danger. You are at risk of financial ruin simply because the capitalist system wants y'all to make bricks without straw. So this is what's going on right now. There has been an article that came out recently in the Orlando Sentinel talking about how older people are now returning to the workforce. Yes, older people, my mama, your mama, your grandma, your granddaddy, your grandpappy, your, your, your aunties, your uncles, they all going back into the workforce. Why? Because they can't afford to live. Let me ask you this, is this sustainable? You guys already know the answer to that question. Go ahead and take the poll as well. I asked, I'm asking people if they will be able to retire by the age of 65 or not. Some people will say yes, some people will say no, some people say, I don't know, I'm not sure. But go ahead and take the poll as well. We'll be getting into that. But one of the things I wanted to do was go into this article here and then we'll actually go into a video as well. Because I think it's important that we, because a lot of times, one of the biggest issues that a lot of us tend to blame the boomer generation for our economic woes. But a lot of us, a lot of the boomers, it's really not their fault because they were just going by what the silent generation and the greatest generation were doing. Now, could they have changed things? Yes. That's why it's incumbent upon us to do the changing, right? But what about the silent generation? What about, what about the greatest generation, right? What have they done as well? Now, this is not about generation blaming. But what I'm saying is, is that some of these generations thought that they were doing things better for their children. But in reality, it just led to a Pandora's box being opened. And so now a lot of us are suffering the older we get, or a lot of us are suffering at a younger age, the older we get. Things aren't progressing as well as they should have. Let me share this article out of your Orlando Sentinel. It says, older Floridians are going back to work as life gets less affordable. So, this came out earlier today, says, Larry Jessick couldn't hear his alarm, so it went off at 5 a.m. His wife nudged him awake. Half hour later, he was out the door, green polo tucked in, lunch cooler in hand. While neighbors slept, Jessick ambled to his car, guided by street lamps and moonlight. He is 77 years old, Vietnam veteran, 
and great grandfather to two. He is also part of the fast growing age group in the labor force, people 75 and older. So he went to work at Publix, says Americans are living longer and for some continuing to work in their later years is a practical choice made for the mental and social well-being. And I emphasize for some, I would argue very few now, says, but for many like Jessic, it's also a matter of necessity. Seniors are seniors work because they have to afford medical bills, mortgages, food, and occasional pleasure. But because their fixed incomes and drained savings accounts are no longer enough to keep them afloat, as the cost of groceries, homeowners association fees, and insurance rates soar, because they're one crisis from financial disaster and fear they won't be able to afford assisted living if their health suddenly declines. So that's the point. Uh, that's the point when it comes to why they are no longer able to stay retired. Medical bills, mortgages, food, and the occasional pleasure. Now, you and I both know that the older you get, the more you need to go see the doctor. All right? Shout out to you, Sabiha. You see a lot of elderly people all the time. So therefore, of course, you know, there are some doctors uh, who are involved in... Um, and end of life care. And so the older you get, the more you have to see because they have to make sure that, you know, you maintain that more razor's edge of living, right? And so a lot of older people thought in their mind, well, we have 400, 500, 600, 700 thousand dollars left in, in retirement. We're good, right? We're going to be golden. So by the time we hit 65, oh, yeah, it's party time. Party time on the, on the cruise ship. All right, let's get it on, right? We're going to be listening to the Marvelettes and, 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 and the Temptations while, you know, we doing the conga, you know, while, on the cruise ship. Nah. <laughs> that's not the way it is now. It's not the way it is because ultimately capitalism got this country, this world by the throat. And by doing so, now they're suffering. The same system that they thought that was great for them in the 50s, especially with the expansion of the middle class, is now crunching them. The same system that they had clung to and said, oh my God, we were able to make, you know, good money. We were able to grow because we got hired by these capitalists and they were able to pay top dollar for our services and our goods. Now those same capitalists are saying, ha, 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 ha. No, 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 no. We want all that money back. It's kind of interesting how a lot of boomers are now going back to the same circumstances that their parents were born in, impoverished and uh, pinching pennies because the capitalists don't want to give them a damn thing, even though they're the ones who are making the capitalists rich. It's sad. It saddens me because boomers thought that they were going to be, because it was it was always said that boomers, you know, did better 
than their parents' generation. But it ain't over until the fat lady sings. And the fat lady hasn't even sung one key yet. And now the boomers are actually starting to do worse. It's just sad. It makes me sad. But this is the reality of the situation. So it talks about how they bought a condo back in 2021. Uh, so here's the thing. It says Larry has spent decades as an electrician. Joyce as a legal assistant. They had their ups and downs with money. They had paired. They had, the pair had reason that between Larry's military pension and Joyce's social security, they had enough to get by. For all intents and purposes, I mean, Larry basically did everything. Larry and Joyce basically did everything that they were supposed to do, right? He got into a profession. She was working as a legal assistant. They probably made decent money, right? It wasn't like crazy, but decent. And then on top of that, he got a military pension and she got social security. They should be okay. They could be okay, but they're not. Why? And how many people do we know that are in their situation? Says for Joy 67, retirement meant an opportunity to reverse the back pain and general lethargy that had built over thousands of hours at, at a desk job. For Larry, who had grown up in Colorado Farm, it meant rest for his body, the first since adolescence. In retirement, Larry enjoyed golfing with neighbors. Okay, it talks about their personal story. But when they started to notice the pinch, it, it was here. It was first it was groceries, then car insurance, and then their condo association fees shot up to $949 a month. I'm sorry, but... HOA fees at $949 a month? Who in the hell is paying $949 a month for HOA fees? Oh, no, nah, baby. Uh-uh. Y'all ain't getting that much from me. You're not. No. And then I got to pay my mortgage on top of that or my rent on top of that? I wish I had some liquor in this. Mm -mm. Would you be, would you pay $949 in HOA fees? Would you be cool with that? Oh my goodness. Huh. Has almost doubled the rate when they first moved in. Hell, I would have I would have scoffed at even if it was over four hundred dollars. I would have like hell no. Says replacing the aging appliances and installing hurricane windows to protect their home pushed them over the edge. Says when Joyce looked over their list of monthly expenses, reality sunk in. They couldn't make this last. Walk into any store, you'll see them. Older adults working the cash register at Walmart, sweeping the floor at Target, man manning the paint counter at Lowe's. The number of seniors in the American workforce is growing at a rate greater than all other age groups combined. By 2030, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics report projects that near report pro report projects that nearly 12% of people ages 75 and older will be working more than doubling the rate in 2000. It says one reason for the shift is simple. In the past, the window between retirement and death was shorter, maybe 15 years. Today, people who retire in their 60s may well live into their late 80s or 90s, so there's a need many to work longer. That's part of it. I would say that's part of it, but it's not all of it. And one thing that they are kind of alluded to, but was it didn't really put a pin on it, 
was that the greed of the corporations, the greed of the billionaires has went far and above their expectations of how inflation would go. Because inflation is basically the corporate dictators raising the prices because of their greed. That's all it really is. It's not, oh, well, it's just, just the nature of the market. No, 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 no. It's because they just want more money. If you want to go down to the to the raw materials, the people who oversee the corporations for that that mine the raw materials, they're the ones who are raising the prices. And then everybody else down the line has to raise their prices too. All because they want more. So let's say hypothetically, you are you are the CEO and you're the shareholders of Exxon. Well, guess what? You want more money because why? Because ultimately that's how capitalism works. Capitalism means you know, infinite growth on a planet with finite resources. So you want that growth that year over year, that fiscal year, you want to make more last year in your dividends than you did the year prior. And so in order to do that, one of the things they have to do is raise up the prices. Well, if you're, say, a CEO of Exxon, then guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to raise those prices. Why? Because as a CEO, you have a fiduciary responsibility to your shareholders. With that being said, then the price goes up. Then guess what else goes up? All of your goods and services go up, meaning that the prices of food, uh, the prices of regular goods and services all go up exponentially because everybody else got to get theirs down the line too. Because capitalism is unsustainable. So that's what it is. And so because they're raising their prices, because they want to make more because of their greed, because they probably made just, you know, they probably did really decent the year before, and they can't keep, keep it the same amount. No, 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 no. They got to raise it up. And so as they continuously raise it up, then that puts more of the squeeze. But sometimes they'll raise it up higher than they would in the typical trend. And so that's why we're feeling the squeeze even more than we thought. So that's why mama and daddy got to go back to work. Because ultimately, the shareholders have to get their dividends. Says, insufficient savings are another factor prompting older adults to keep working, says Laura Quimby, researcher at Boston College's Center for Retirement Research. Nearly 8% of Americans believe there is a retirement crisis. According to the a report released this year by the National Institute on Retirement Security, one and a half fear they won't be financially secure when they retire if the day ever comes. This is another variable, and this is one of the variables that people like my mother and many other people are going through, is that there's a lot of older people who never truly got the chance to save up for retirement in the first place because of the system and how it treats workers. So you have a lot of older people that never even got a chance to tru truly retire. To truly be able to kick back. To truly be able to just live their life and just experience it. Now, it, it doesn't mean that they have all this, you know, this, you know, opulence and they have all this money saved up. It's like, no, they have enough, you know, to live you know, a somewhat kind of decent life. But even then, that is asking too much now. And they weren't able to save up for that. And so a lot of them never even got a chance to retire. Or even if they did, they just weren't able to save up enough. Or they had hard times in their 20s, 30s, and maybe even 40s. And they didn't even start, start saving up for retirement until they were like 50 years old. So that's the sad part.
it talks about how they cannot afford, uh, uh, it says a lot of them cannot afford, well, a third of Americans can't afford a $1,000 emergency without borrowing or taking on debt. Talks about how uh, one of the biggest things is environmental factors, which says worsening storms have driven up insurance rates for homeowners and state legislation requiring condos to keep re reserve funds for building repairs following Surfside collapse have contributed to the burden. Meanwhile, the influx of out-of-state residents saw housing prices soar. So another thing is, climate change is causing your insurance rates to go up. Y'all care about climate change now? I just heard uh, Dr. Tom Terry, who is our meteorologist here in Central Florida and uh, WFTV, talking about how we're already experiencing activity in the tropics way earlier than anticipated. And it's going to be a stronger year for tropical storms, tropical depression, and hurricanes. You don't think that the insurance companies aren't looking at that and saying, uh-oh, we may need to hike up rates even more. So if you own a home, those insurance rates are going to go up even more because you live in a peninsula surrounded by water and Hurricane Alley. So this also affects people who are older, who are retired, who didn't think that their insurance rates would start keep bumping up as this goes on. So I just wanna share this as well. Cause I think this is interesting. Says, though Joyce has always been budget conscious, a previous marriage and divorce set her back too. So you never think about all these things that happen in your life before you retire. And then one of the things she talks about here is that they're not able to spend the quality time together that they wanted to when they were initially retired. Says these days, more than anything, Joyce and Larry miss quality time together. They yearn to be out in the world, eating pizza on the sand and Gulfport and watching $5 movie matinees. But weekdays are exhausting. By the time they make it to the end of the workday, they often opt to sit and rest at home. Why? because the shareholders got to get theirs. They don't care about the older people. Which means that instead of actually enjoying their life, they don't really get a chance. That means their life is really essentially not theirs, not theirs to live. My mother is 72. She's trying to go back to work. Do you think that I want my mother to go back to work? Nope. She's a great grandma. She should be, you know, out living, spending time with her great grandson, chilling out with her grandkids, right? She should be going to brunch. I want my mother to go to brunch and have quiche, right? But she can't. Because the shareholders got to get theirs. 
I have this uh, video that I want to share as well. And it's quite interesting. I would like for you guys to see this because it really puts into reality what a lot of our older people are going through as well as what we are looking forward to if we do not change this system. Let's go. And we want to keep talking about this because it's become a reality for many of a certain age. Teresa Ghilarducci is a labor economist. She's published works in several journals and co-authored uh, books, including her most recent Rescuing Retirement. Teresa, good morning to you. Now, we're seeing these retirees return uh, because uh, I'm sure a lot of them are very fearful of the volatile economy. But what are some of the other reasons impacting them? I would think socialization could be a, another reason. Oh yeah, sure, Adrian. Uh, well, that story was really heartbreaking, um, but it's actually the motivation for my work. Um, we are, I'm expecting a lot of um, retirees are going to be looking for work. I was really glad um, that the person you profiled actually got a job. Um, they'll be coming back to work because of inflation, but also because their income did not keep up with what they thought they, they needed. Um, and worse, during the pandemic, millions of older workers were pushed out before they were ready. Uh, so what that means is that they expected to accumulate more pensions. They expected to not dip into their pension plans. They expected not to go into debt. And because of that massive unemployment during the pandemic, I expect that if they um, are welcome back to the labor force, they will try to come back. Well so there was another variable that they weren't thinking about. The pandemic hit, and then next thing you know, it was just like, oh. And when something like that happens, who are typically the first to go? The first to go are two different types of people, either the people who are who just got there or people who are set to leave in a little bit. But they're like, nah, you got to go quicker. And so that's what happened. Let's say you were due to retire in like five years, right? No, say, let's say you were due to retire in three years. Then the pandemic hits. Guess what? Oh, yeah, we cut that three years short. But I won't earn enough for my pension. Sorry, too bad, so sad, bye-bye. Now look, they had to, they were forced to retire. That's another variable a lot of people don't think about. And on top of that, you have a lot of them that didn't save up enough. They couldn't save up enough. And you also got to remember some of these same older people also had to suffer through the 2008 crisis. Some of them lost their housing. Back in 2008. And guess what? That is wealth that they lost. So that was 15, 16 years ago. That wasn't that long. So 15, 16 years ago, they suffered a housing crash. Right? Went through a, a, a major recession. Then on top of it, we went through uh, the pandemic. And now look at it, the inflation crisis, and I call it a crisis that is caused by the corporate dictators that is now forcing them back into the war workforce. So, they, so people, particularly boomers, have been getting it left and right, right before they say peace out to the workforce. You say it like um, it's a question, though. You say yeah, it like yeah, if, if there was. I will. I totally will um, answer that question about whether or not older workers are coming back to work because somehow retirement was unsatisfying. I'm not seeing any evidence for that. When people retire and they have enough money, they are usually happier than they thought they would be.
this is something that grinds my gears and I cannot stand. Here's one of my biggest issues. The people who go, oh, well, they just want to go back to work because they just want to be around people. They just want to go back to work because they want to feel productive again. They retired for a reason, boo. If they wanted to stay, they would have stayed. But no, they retired because they actually wanted to get out of the workforce. People don't have retirement parties just to suddenly turn around and go, well, you know what? I just, I couldn't help myself. I got to go back out there. No. Are you crazy? Are you nuts? My God, people do not go back into the workforce simply because they just want to be around people. No, that is far and few in between. What in the world is this like? What in tarnation is this lady talking about? I'm not, not this lady, but the interviewer. Let, let, let's let this lady break it down. Because she breaks it down so beautifully. They find that they structure their time with activities they like to do, with mainly friends, with family, with doctor's appointments, or with travel, or just sitting around thinking about what they can do and be when they can control the, the pace and content of their time. So going back to work to socialize, no thank you. They can find other ways to socialize. There you have it. There you go. They don't want to go back to work to socialize. They don't want to start socializing, y'all. They don't want to, look, look, let me ask you this question. Do you like to go to work to socialize? Exactly, exactly. So if you don't like it, then guess what? Sure as hell, grandmama don't like to go back to work to socialize either. If you can't stand them, they can't stand them. The feeling is mutual woke. So why in the world are we saying, oh, they just want to go because they want to socialize? No, they don't. Do you know who do you know who this generation is? This is the generation that went to the juke joints. This is the generation that used to dance, you know, they used to do the bump. Uh, uh. Like they, they were so they been, they stayed socializing. They were doing, they were doing it all, baby. The, this is the the Woodstock generation. Baby, they do enough socializing as it is. Do you did you know that the rate of, of STIs exploded among elderly people? They they good on the socialization part. They good on socializing. They're not they're not doing that to go back go back to work because of that. And a lot of them, they're getting it in. But that's the thing. Like, we... They do not need to go back for that. Sorry. Well, do you think that they have bargaining power? I mean, we're still yeah. seeing so many people leave the industry. We're seeing so many hiring shortages all across industries. Exactly. And so when they're coming back, do they have yeah. the chance to negotiate a reasonable pay? Yeah, that, I really looked into that. When, when they come back, are they going to have the kind of bargaining power we're seeing among leisure and hospitality workers? Because those wages are going up. Or the Amazon workers and, and Starbucks workers who are union, who are organizing. Well, yes and no. The Amazon uh, warehousing is an old person's job. A lot of retirees, we saw an award-winning film, um, um, you know, win the Best Picture Award. Um, in 2020 about older workers working in Amazon warehouses. So if they unionize, great, bargaining power. Starbucks workers, hotel workers, those are young people's job and, and older workers not gonna have bargaining power there. A lot of older workers, especially women, go into home health and personal um, care. They're old women taking care of even older women. Um, and of those um, occupations unionized, some of the lowest paid occupations in the country, um, then they will get bargaining power. But just the supply and demand dynamics on their own, I, I wouldn't count on it. What we so one of the things that 
this shows to me is just because you have experience, that's not everything. You can say, well, I had this many ex this many years experience, you know, that should put me as a shoe in. Nah, <laughs> no. It's not that way anymore. It's kind of sad, but it's not. Just because you have all that experience, Yeah, ah. it makes me feel bad, but that's the way it is. So let's finish this. We see wage growth among older workers is actually much lower than for younger workers. What's some advice that you would give to somebody who has yeah. to uh, make that step back into the workforce when they thought they were kind of yeah. wrapped up with it? Yeah, I um, um, try to actually go into a job that's unionizing. <laughs> um, you know, if you're going to go to a Starbucks store, pick one that is um, organizing. Um, go to home health care and personal care that um, is um, not just a private firm, um, but is one of those places where the state or the city pay for it. Um, really know your rights and don't self-deprecate because you're old. You know, don't mm -hmm. make those old person's jokes. Don't mm -hmm. make any of those. Um, and then get some help from any kind of local AERP uh, about how to build your confidence and get whatever individual bargaining power you can get. You know, I see a silver lining here. I really do. I think that it's quite possible that because we need workers so badly that we might start to actually honor our seniors again, our elders again, in a way that we have not really done in the past few years. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold up. If we actually honored our seniors, if we actually gave more respect to our seniors, we would not have to force them out of retirement in the first place. What is this lady saying? Madam, are you kidding me right now? Oh, well, we'll respect them more because we see them out in the workforce. No, 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 no. If we actually have more respect for them, then we wouldn't be forcing them to have to leave retirement at their elderly age. In fact, more respect for them means that you actually see them as let them live their lives with what time they have left. But they're not wanting to do that because guess what? The corporate dictators don't have any honor or respect for those who are older among us. If they did, then they would be trying to lower the retirement age. That's right. Lower it. And the goal was really to allow people to live their lives without having to waste it away for these corporate dictators, that's the implementation of social security. But now they can't do it. And so whatever this lady is saying, I, I, I'm sorry, ma'am, but no, if that's not gonna cause more respect, and then on top of it, you have a lot of Gen X and millennial workers that are going to start resenting older workers because now they're taking the jobs that they would, uh, you know, otherwise get. But now there's almost like a fight between, you know, boomers, Gen X, millennials, and Gen Z. Because remember, Gen Z aren't little kids anymore. Gen Zs are now starting to have their own kids. So I think that's important. <sighs> yeah, and that, that honoring that dignity doesn't usually come from outside. It has to come from mobilization of older workers and our support of them. Yeah. So I hope so, too. All right. Teresa Gillarducci, thank you so much. So, yes, unfortunately, that's what's going on within our older workers. So what is the solution for something like that? One of the solutions that I offer is, you know how we talk about building mutual aid, we talk about building dual power. This also will help and assist our older people because if we're trying to build mutual aid and dual power, this allows them to be able to live out their lives. We can change this system in fundamental ways so that they can be able to actually have something better for themselves, at least for the, the, for the remainder of their lives you know, while we change the system. I, I just, I feel for a lot of older people, especially boomers. And now Gen X is coming up behind them. You know, is Gen X going to be able to do the same thing? Uh, this is why, you know, pushing for 
things, you know, like building mutual aid, building dual power, or even things like um, the citizen ballot initiatives, you know, for our seniors, that also would be a great thing. So let's focus on using the power that we have so that we can actually make better changes for them. And then that will in turn put better changes for ourselves too. Thank you so very much for watching my channel and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.